Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from their entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. I am currently listening to Drunkish by Stephanie Wilder-Taylor. I really like Stephanie. And this is a book about leaving alcohol. It's called A A Memoir of Loving and Leaving Alcohol. And I really dig her take on it. She's a funny person, and I love having her voice actually in my ear reading it to me. New members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash crappens or text crappens to 500-500. Since 2013, Bombas has donated over 100 million socks, underwear, and T-shirts to those facing homelessness. If we counted those on air, this ad would last over 1,157 days. But if we counted the time it takes to make a donation possible, it would take just a few clicks. Because every time you make a purchase, Bombas donates an item to someone who needs it. Go to bombas.com slash Wondery and use code Wondery for 20% off your first purchase. That's bombas.com slash Wondery, code Wondery. When you choose Organic Valley, not only will you be enjoying great-tasting dairy, You'll help to save over 1,600 small organic family farms who are protecting over 400,000 acres of organic farmland and all the plants and animals that call it home. This is dairy you can feel good about. It's great tasting, high quality organic dairy, ethically sourced from small organic family farms. To find Organic Valley Dairy near you, visit ov.coop. That's ov.coop. Hello and welcome to Crappy Hour Live. I'm Ronnie. That's Ben over there. Hi, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Good. This is our bi-weekly chat about shit that happens on Bravo. What do you think about that, Ben? I think it's great. I'm very excited about it. I love Crappy Hour. It's nice to be back. Nice to be back. And we had a long, a big long weekend. So it's nice to have like a little bit of a, uh, you know, like a, what do you, no, it's not a come down, but it's like a denouement, right? It looks sort of like a post, a post show here after the Crappies. Yeah, um, we had a super fun time. I think I'm thinning out my skin too much with all this face product I'm putting on it because see this red on my nose? Do you see it, Ben? Okay. Red dot? Is it leprosy? <laughs> yeah, my nose is falling off. This is from pulling my shirt on every day, my t-shirt on. It's now scraping my nose. This is where it hits my nose. And I'm okay. scraping it. I think that's how sensitive my skin is getting. So you know what? There is such thing as too much tretinoin. That's, okay. That's my advice to start everybody off. Calm down on the tret. Okay, everybody, tret, calm tret, down on the tret. Tret carefully with Tret and Owen. That should be their new slogan. Tret and Owen. Tret and Owen. Um, by the way, over on YouTube, um, SE says, hey, guys, you were amazing on Saturday. Thank you very, very much. You guys, it wasn't, you guys were amazing. Everyone who was in the audience and everyone who tuned in online and, you know, to get the best, one of my favorite things is after everything is said and done, you know, we went out to a bar afterwards, we partied, and then I went out and got late night Korean food. I got back to my home around 3.30 in the morning, you know, and then I got into bed and I like opened up my phone and to see all the really kind, all the really kind words that everyone was saying, all the really sweet words, all the beautiful things everyone posted on social media and all the amazing photos. It really is like... It's really great. It's so cheesy because we do put so much work into it, but it really does make it all worth it. Like, it, it's just, it, it feels great. Yes, that was a very good time. Okay, so what's going on in the Bravo world, Ben? What's going on in the Bravo what world? What do you want to talk about? Well, I was well, just, okay, you go. Uh, no, go you ahead. Answer the, I, you I answer the I question caught you off. Me. I thought I caught you <laughs> off guard. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was here to say that I was just watching The Housewife and The Hustler Part 2 right before this. And I thought you'd be very proud of me that I was yes, catching I up on my Yes, I am proud of Erica you. How far did you get through it? I got most of the way through it. I had to have I, I had like a little uh, call in the middle of it, which delayed me. I was going to finish it right on time. But I got through the part where Erica, uh, the Marco Marco part where um they were like i did not realize when you had told me that 
Erica wore a wire and was um, like part of like, oh, ruining some designer's life. I thought it was like some random person on like Etsy. I didn't realize it was Marco Marco. I mean, Marco Marco is like established and famous. They're like, they're noteworthy. Yeah, I was they're huge. shocked. Yeah. I was shocked. When they first showed up on the documentary, I was like, oh, I love a messy gay who's going to come and talk shit about like Erica. I didn't realize it was not a messy gay situation, that it was like, like these, this was, these were the victims. It was, it actually kind of rattled me. I thought it was a really terrible story. Um, like it's just such a, such an awful thing to do to, to what seemed like two very nice people. Yeah. Um, that was really, really not good. And it, it kind of explains her, um, sharp turn in the costume department. <laughs> yes. Very bad. And also like, I mean, there's still a, like a, still a large part of me believes that still this was really mainly Tom Girardi who was like, need my money back, gonna do this thing. Erica, you have to do this for me. I do believe that she was definitely bossing her around. But that being said, if even if that were the case, I really don't like that she would use the fe the wire in a federal crime case as like a silly answer to two truths and a lie. So yeah, like, even like if you bragging are... about it, like, oh, it was so fun. Yeah, I was a I used a wire in a federal fraud case. <laughs> yeah, like if she were like, yeah. yeah, like if 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 it were a situation where she was like, you know, I had to do, I had to turn on my friends because this is the sort of person I lived with. And I had to do this and, and you know, I, I was, I was led to believe that they had defrauded us and that I thought I was the one being betrayed. If she had, and if she had come like that, you know, it's like, okay, I have, I have sympathy. But the fact that she's like, well, here's a fun story. I once wore a wire in a case, a case where you like nearly threw someone that was a friend of yours, someone who you, a collaborator, someone who is like, by all accounts, seems like a, a, a nice person in jail and like, potentially destroy his company i was like that, yeah I was for those really of you for those of you who don't know what we're talking about basically there's this uh, sequel to that documentary and w one of the things that they revealed is that erica was using this famous costume designer uh to do all of her stuff and when she walked in there she said money is not an object we won't be needing invoices or whatever so he's just she's asking for all this expensive shit he's making her ten thousand dollar costumes for all of her stuff it was over a million dollars you know millions and millions of dollars worth of stuff and then erica and tom ran out of money and because they couldn't pay they accused this guy of fraud and said that he was overcharging them all of this uh stuff they come take this guy put him take him to jail <laughs> like ruin his life he was about to adopt a child the chances for that were ruined they ruined his company they ruined this guy's life uh because they couldn't pay their fucking bills and then uh the charges were dropped and it turns out that tom was friends with the secret service who led this uh arrest and investigation and everything else it's really it's really really bad so for erica to just show up bragging about it and laughing about it i mean it's yikes. wild i had I had a Are you impressed former... with how quickly I did that, man? You're welcome. Very Don't impressed. Um, <laughs> I had a roommate who you know, Ronnie, but I won't. I won't say who it is. Who was who used to work for a powerful person here in LA? Uh, it's a very very wealthy person, but the person was Mashugana, and he came to believe that all his employees had stolen from him, and he sued them all. And so my roommate was basically stuck in litigation for several years uh dealing with it and i think i was younger it was like you know it was like 15 18 years ago so i was like oh you know it'll work out because i know he didn't steal anything this is, this is like the most ridiculous suit but like watching marco marco i really kind of reflected on how hard that actually really must have been for my roommate and like that is so scary when you have like these really powerful people who are abusing their power for some either like paranoia or in, in this case in the case of tom girardi financial gain and then innocent people who don't have a lot of power who are just trying to like make their way in the world wind up you know getting ground down because of it it's really terrible i i really just the whole thing made me really think about my roommate and made me reflect on how i don't think i really appreciated at the time how difficult it was for him do you see? There's the real message. <laughs> this really I hurt learned. Ben's roommate at the end of the Guys, day. made me Guys. realize my roommate really went through it. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, they were all, it's like these people, like these, these people who um, have a lot of money and power, they just, you know, they don't care who is, you know, whose who's businesses, whose career paths, 
whose families get messed up, you know, because they just, you know, they want their money or, you know, they're out of money. Yeah. Don't trust rich people. Okay. Yeah. Don't trust poor people either. Don't trust people. There you go. Hugs, everybody. Don't trust people, I think, is a great takeaway. That's always been my lesson, guys. Trust no one. Hugs. Oh. No one. Those are going to be my wedding vows. Um, I vow nothing, and I trust you not. Let's get married anyway. Let's do it and hope you die first with more money. Uh, um, um, okay, so there was a rumor that uh, Cynthia got married over Valentine's Day weekend, or Valentine's Day, but it was probably an ad for something. What do you think? Cynthia getting married? I don't... Uh, who... Huh. Okay, here's um, the headline. I'm looking Real Housewives my... of Atlanta. Cynthia Bailey shocks fans with Valentine's Day wedding video every day. I love you more. And it's a music video of her putting on wedding dress, getting it zipped up, putting on a wedding ring, wedding shoes, and, you know, fade out, fade into her taking deep breaths as she sits and gets ready for her wedding. I guarantee you she did not get married. No. With the and amount then we of see times... a bald guy, the, the back of a bald guy's head as he slowly sips some, some scotch or something, and then we never see his face. No. No, it de here's the thing. With the amount of time that Cynthia spoke to us about 50 Synth and Chihil, she can't keep her mouth shut if, about if she was in a relationship. There's no way she's having a discreet relationship and not broadcasting it to well, the mountain right. tops. I'm coming up with an acronym, okay? That was a trick question. You're correct. It was an ad for a bridal shop. So. Ah, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, there's not, not a whole lot. I think the big news that was circulating. Oh, Heather Gay. Yes. Okay. Well, Heather Gay, uh, people asking why Heather Gay unfollowed us. First of all, you guys, are we housewives that you're checking up on who's following us and who's not following us? That's makes crazy. Me feel, makes me feel very important. To that I know. We felt really good because we started us. getting questions about that. <laughs> and we thought Who it was really us? funny that anybody gives a crap. That Heather Gay unfollowed us. But yes, it is true. Heather Gay did get pissed off at us. And she did unfollow us. Uh, because she her skin is as light as it seems to be on television. And she got very upset that we invited um, Monica. Well, we did not invite Monica. But we nominated Monica for some crappy awards. And that set Heather off. Because he uh, Monica is like a real criminal. And I tried to explain to her. <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, like... I'm not going to change my show for you. Like, you're nice and everything, but we're still going to do a show about Bravo, whether you're we're... here or not. Okay, lady? Like, I have been doing this show before you were on Bravo, and I will be doing this show after you are gone from Bravo. And you're not going to tell me what to do. Okay? And Monica is an asshole, but she was a very popular, hilarious asshole who gave you guys a very good season. So, let me back tell you off. She was... Okay? Let me tell you something. For us... To not nominate Monica as best newbie would be Made such an insincere hot. bullshit. Okay, yeah. I, lo I, I love Heather Gay. But if she's upset at us and she's mad at us because we nominated someone who was such an impactful no new Bravo person, like you can't make us feel bad about doing that. It's a TV show. Are, are you gonna un, are you gonna now not follow the LA Times that wrote a profile about her? Are you now gonna not follow Variety that wrote, wrote a profile about Monica? But suddenly we nominate in a gag award show, which by the way, we are no longer a gag award show because now that we have people unfollowing us because of who we nominate means that our awards now mean something. So thank Get you. Get the fuck out of here, lady. I even bought your book <laughs> twice and listened to your ass for six hours in a row. So go away, all right? And yeah, someone just said in the comment, keep your energy for Jen, okay? So whatever. Listen, I always really liked Heather. I thought she was really nice. I think Heather probably does not love the fact that we don't just kiss her ass completely, did not completely buy everything she was hurling at people during that finale. I certainly didn't. And you know what? That's just how it is. And that's why I can't make friends in that world because I'm going to still show up to work and talk shit. That's what I do. And if you do something stupid on TV or something that I think is bullshit, I'm going to say it. That is literally what I do. I'm not here for you. I'm here for Ben and the listeners. So piss <laughs> off, all right? And when you're ready to go back to play some poker in Vegas, give me a call. But my yes. advice until then is get the fuck over it, okay? Because I'm still going to be here tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, look. I feel like she will get over it. She will follow us again. You know, she's she's in her feelings about it. 
And you know what? By the way, Monica is a fucking asshole and she's a disaster. But we have to be, first and foremost, we have to be authentic to ourselves and our podcast and our freaking award show. And we have to do that before we are our authentic award to show. Any this real is house a of. very serious award. How dare you come for the crackers? Yeah. Well, no, honestly, could you imagine if we're like, oh, wow, you're right. Like, she she is she is a criminal and we shouldn't we she should be disqualified hell no we have a sandwich by the way we have a, we nominated a sandwich in a category okay <laughs> pop it lost pop it and his sandwich split their votes okay so here's heather saying that we're elevating monica by giving her a nominations on our show well guess what monica is just as good as a bon me sandwich right now so congratulations okay i like you heather but let's come on. Let's let's bring it back in. Yeah, comments. you know, just general <laughs> advice, and also to us. This is anyone involved with Bravo in any way, or podcast, or entertainment in general. But I think especially the housewives. But I will take my own advice. Don't get too far up your ass, and don't take yourself <laughs> seriously. This is all fucking stupid, and you're part of a giant cartoon. So get the fuck over yourself, okay? Please. Now, I'll okay. You, so let's. By the way, I just want to say also, someone who who did get it and was super cool. Honestly, Sheena. Sheena was great. She came in. She was down for everything. She was on that stage. She was hilarious. She was. She was. She. She came in with ideas on how to even like up what we we're gonna do with her. And not only that, she stayed until the very like we came off stage at the end of the show, and she was there ready to still hang out. Like she did not be like, I'm gonna do my thing at the top of the show and peace out. She was down. I have to say, I. I really. You know what? Our little Shishu. Our she little really Shishu, I was I was really impressed too. Um, you know, we know that Shishu's nice. Like we've met her before, and she's always been really nice. But I think being friends with Ariana and stuff. Ariana's a listener. She lis She like actually listens to it. And so I think she tells people listen to it, and then they listen to it, and then we're being mean to them or whatever. And Shishu's a, a sweet, innocent soul in a lot of ways. And I think that she's sensitive, and I, she probably listened to it and thought we were going to be mean to her or whatever and she came despite that and you know we could tell she was a little scared before she came you know just the mm -hmm. before the show stuff we could tell she was a little nervous but um she came and she did a great job and she was a really good sport you know who else did not come but she couldn't because they were shooting but also heather opens up the door for people like angie you know who is yeah. a good sport and sent in a whole video mocking herself and her whole i am greek stuff yeah. You know? And uh, so you people know, you know, it, up on that pedestal. Yeah, exactly. We really appreciate people who get the joke, who understand what it is. This is all a big fan celebration because you know what? We're all fans of Bravo. We watch these shows and you like you like I understand why Heather would be like, fuck Monica, like for sure. But like you also have to understand why we watch these shows and be like, oh my God, like, wow, Monica, what a great addition to that season. It, like that was what a wild ride we went on. You can't deny us as fans our reactions to watching your cartoon. Right. What are we not going to nominate Glenn Close for Fatal Attraction? I mean, sure, she was crazy. <laughs> that was the point. Yeah, I like bunnies. But we also have to nominate Glenn Close, okay? Right. You don't get a mad, mad at a chef for cooking a bunny. Why would you get mad at Glenn Close? Why is yeah. it only okay for some people? You know? Listen, Heather, Heather will settle down. She will settle down and she will, she will, she will come back. But will but I? For right now. Will I well, settle yeah. down? That's the thing. I don't know. I don't know. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna, maybe we'll, maybe you and Heather need to have a sit down in an ice maze. <laughs> right. It's and about cook me. sausages <laughs> over uh, flames, like some sort of strange fire pit. And then <laughs> maybe, maybe there can be peace. No, I take my own advice. I don't take this shit too seriously. I know it's, I know it's so stupid. So I'm, uh, that's why I'm always shocked when I meet people in Bravo who take it seriously. Cause it seems like they would know better than anybody that this is a giant cartoon. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But mm, people don't. Okay, so let's see what else is happening. Shishu bought a house that was in the news. She bought a farmhouse. She bought a mar modern farmhouse. Farm house. Okay. Oh, also those Blink One Eighty Seven dudes or whatever were there. We saw we saw one of those guys. No, the twenty oh. the twenty seven the Blink One <laughs> the twenty seven. Yeah, yeah that's who she did the the Good as Gold remix with. Which she's like, I think she, Shishu is releasing um, more music very soon. She was telling us, and we were gonna be like, oh yeah, we're gonna ask you about that on stage. And then we didn't. So you know, keep an ear out, an eye and ear out for Shishu's <laughs> new music. I mean, I'm sure she'll post it everywhere. So 
Yeah, uh, so that was in some news. Uh, the big news that was happening was Larza and Marcus's PR breakup stunt, where they broke up with each other. They unfollowed each other on the Super Bowl. Did we? We didn't talk about that on Crappy Hour, right? When did we talk about that? The um, no, the no, the the breakup happened like a week ago because I know I had the the in memoriam for the crappies already, and then I was like, oh my god. It is my duty and obligation to make sure that Larsa and Marcus are included in the in memoriam, even though I knew it was, by the way, it was totally fake. And I knew it's just a publicity stunt. Like there could be no one else who would be more publicity stuntish. But yeah, it happened during the Super Bowl. We talked about it on the show. We said, of course, these two dum dums. No, did we talk about it on the show? I don't know where we talked about it. It wasn't on Crappy Hour. But of course, Larsa tried to upstage the Super Bowl by announcing her uh, cryptically her separation from Marcus during the game. Yes, and you know we didn't really believe it. Uh, just posted a picture with his dad, and people were like, "Oh my God, this means it's real. That means it's yeah. really real when you're bringing MJ into it." But then they um, started following each other again, and then they were seen at a jewelry shop together, buying jewelry, yeah. buying a ring, ring shopping. Which is, I mean, wow, that's like stealing from Kyle because Kyle wasn't Kyle just doing the whole like, "I'm ring shopping with Morgan Wade." Ah. Yeah. That is that is definitely very Kyle, and I I believe that the breaking news from today is that they were roasted by a comedian to their face. Right? They like went to some. It looked like there was like a comedian on like the beach or something, and they were walking. I don't know if they were walking by or whatever, but the comedian was like, "Oh, that's like like Larsa Pippen. Wow, she fucked up both Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan. That's some talent." So he said something, said something like that to her, and she probably was like. I don't get it, like, like, why would people be mean to me, like, I'm just, like, in love, like, I don't try to even say his name, like. Yeah, like, I like, no, I like new Kardashians one time, so, let's, like, really mean, like, it's time for a commercial, it's time for a Crappens commercial. You know what's the worst is when you are shopping online and you're so excited for everything in your cart and then you look and everything's going to arrive in like five weeks. And you're like, why am I even doing this? And you just give up. I hate that. Don't you, Ronnie? Oh my God, I hate that. And also when it's so expensive. I mean, listen, shipping can make or break a sale. And as your business grows, ShipStation can help optimize how you ship your orders so you can stay competitive while you scale up. ShipStation is really great for all of this stuff. They've got a free trial and quick setup. It's really easy to try things out before you commit or get started right away. Their dashboard is so user-friendly. You can easily automate shipping tasks. You can manage orders in one simple dashboard. You know, one thing also that's really cool is that ShipStation has enterprise solutions that reduce warehouse costs and improve profitability. And like, as your business grows, you can really just save thousands on shipping costs because of that. ShipStation has industry-leading discounted rates from USPS, UPS, DHL, and Global Post with discounts up to 89% off USPS and UPS rates. Optimize and keep up your momentum for growth with ShipStation. Use promo code CRAPPENS today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code CRAPPENS. You can power up your playtime with the Nintendo Switch system, the home of Mario & Friends. You may discover exciting surprises with Mario, Princess Peach, and more in Super Mario Bros. Wonder. Or challenge friends to a race in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. You can head to Nintendo.com to learn more about the Nintendo Switch system. Games and systems sold separately. From Wondery, this is Black History For Real. I'm Francesca Ramsey. And I'm Conscious Lee. What do most <laughs> people think about when they hear the words Black History? Rosa Parks, Reconstruction, MLK, February, Black History Exactly, Month. exactly. There are so many stories of Black History that we just are not really talking about or thinking about, especially outside of February. And we are about to flip the script on all of that. Because on this show, you're going to hear a little less... In August 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And a little bit more. She is a heroine to some, as a fighter for black rights. She is a villain to others. Follow Black History for Real on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. Listen everywhere on February 5th, or you can listen early and ad-free on Wondery Plus starting January 29th. Join Wondery Plus on the Wondery app or on Apple Podcasts. there was a post of um morgan so everybody thought morgan and kyle broke up because 
they unfollow or they didn't unfollow each other, but they erased each other's pictures from their Instagrams, Ben. Wow. It was a huge thing. And everyone's like, oh my God, is Kyle okay with Morgan? Is Morgan okay with Kyle? But then on Valentine's Day, they took a picture with Kesha, a picture with Kesha. And mm -hmm. uh, Kesha was holding up a cardboard sign that said, freedom, I've been waiting for you or something like that. So people were like, oh my God, Kyle's, Kyle's getting a divorce from Maurizio. But um, of course it was about Kesha. But if a Bravo star posts with like Alexander Graham Bell, People would be like, oh, my God, did Kyle invent the light bulb? No. <laughs> Every, they, made, they always make it about the Bravo star. No, I think it was about Kesha finding freedom, you know, because she was, like, with that guy who, like, cultified her or did whatever yeah. to her. Dr. Luke. Which was so weird because then she was part of that singing competition where it was, like, trying to bring down a wall. Like, oh, you had yeah. to break down the wall because... Like people were like going to get stuck behind the wall or some shit. I don't know. It was like some singing competition. I want to see that. My my friend Trisha worked on it. It was really weird. I totally forgot about that. That was like after The Voice when everyone was trying to do strange like music competitions that involved props because The Voice had chairs that would swivel. They had so chairs. Like, how about a wall? <laughs> They're like, how about a bulldozer that just bulldozes you off the stage if you're bad? I've got a new singing competition where if the judge likes you, Adele's going to slip and slide right past you. Okay, everybody? <laughs> Wait to see if you get splashed by Adele passing by. <laughs> I mean, they continue to do this. I mean, the mass Singer, I mean, that's literally like people dressed in crazy costumes and they have to sing songs. Uh, people like Tom Sandoval. And Rising Denver, star on ABC. Okay, well, Ar Ardiana is um, yawning and someone else said, focus, you guys, Simon. Okay, so Simon... Simon is uh god we should have you guys during the show seriously they're like focus you idiots okay so simon uh this is portia's simon all this stuff came out this week now of course for those of you who don't know portia has announced that she is coming back to real housewives of atlanta and actually i announced it two weeks ago here on crappy hour live that portia and nini were both returning but then i took it back because i couldn't find proof whatever i had read that day had been erased so does that mean that nini's coming later I don't know. She said remember, today she's not. Me first. Okay, there she, you go. Today it was like not, but you never know. So I got half of it right at least from whoever yeah. I stole that from that day or ever I read it off of. So anyway, Portia is coming back and almost immediately they posted that her husband is a scammer. He's been deported a bunch of times. He's got bank fraud and all this stuff. He keeps returning with fake names and, and all of this stuff. Um, a, not shocked because just anyone who's that rich and you can't really explain to me why i feel like rich people like truly rich people love explaining why they're that rich you know mm -hmm. i was poor my dad had nothing and then i invented a button you know and it's like then you, they don't shut the fuck up about a button for five hours that's how rich people are but simon it always seemed kind of fishy every time they tried to explain it and so you know it's like pk and dorit just constantly waiting just waiting to see when they're gonna go to jail <laughs> So what do you think? Did you hear about any of this stuff with Simon? No, the only thing I'd seen was that Portia was coming back. I saw her video where she was like, people are saying that Portia Williams is coming back and that's not true. But Portia, goodbye, boo -ba -da. she's in the house. So I was like, I saw that. Bloop. I didn't know that. I didn't know. Like, I said that. I love, I love <laughs> that. that. I will never get sick of no. that. Who said that? I'm like, I'm. I'm actually, I was like looking here to see if I could find the information real quickly to download because I uh, did not, I mean, by the way, am I shocked? Am I shocked? No. Am I, am I surprised? No. I mean, of course this guy is like shady. Let's not overlook this entire engagement and marriage and everything. Like everything has been shady about it to me. So not surprised whatsoever. Do you think they're going to bring Phelan back? Come on, you guys, you have to bring Phelan back. They should. Back. I feel like they actually dropped the ball on that. Like that, like as they, the fact that the producers missed that entire love triangle entirely, it speaks to a failure of Atlanta the past few seasons, to be honest. Okay, well, let me just say this is from a site called Baller Alert. Um, and the headline is Portia Williams' husband, Simon Gabadia, faces citizenship hurdles amid criminal history and immigration controversy. In a significant legal development, the USDC for the Northern District of Georgia Atlanta Division has dismissed the case of Simon against the U.S. and U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, blah, blah, blah. 
Simon, Nigerian citizen, has navigated a tumultuous journey. A uh, credit card fraud got him deported in 1992. Uh, tried to get temporary resident status under a false identity, thereby concealing his criminal history. Um, fine. This is yeah, fine. This makes sense. Good. Well, this is called Atlanta making an effort. So, congrats. One hopes. One hopes. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you who's making an effort right now. Making an effort to stay relevant by shooting her shot with one of the hottest celebrities out there right now, Bethany Frankel. Bethany Frankel is like, how do I get involved in Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift? I know. I go after the mother and I go after Ziploc bags. That's what I do. So here she is. She is had a social media rant where she was upset that Mama Kelsey, Donna, Donna Kelsey got an endorsement with Ziploc bags and Bethany did not. I can't imagine why. I can't imagine why the mother of two currently beloved American football playing celebrities who are attached, one of whom is attached to the biggest star on the planet at the moment. I can't imagine why she would get an endorsement, why someone as warm and lovable and relatable as Bethany Frankel isn't. I, I don't understand this world and the, the lack of justice in it. I know. I can't believe that um, no one else sees Bethany as being as famous as Travis Kelsey. I mean, <laughs> Bethany, Bethany does. The so fact that weird. Ronnie knows who Travis Kelsey is, a football player. Let me, that's, that's significant, okay? And Bethany is trying to be like, but, why, but what about me? What about me? So she says, she said this in a video. She goes, I want to know why Travis Kelsey's mom is being paid for pictures with Ziploc bags coming out of a purse. Okay? Okay? Because guess what? Guess what? I was documented at the Real Housewives of New York with my bathing suit stored in Ziploc bags. And there never was a bag, a Ziploc bag for me at, at all times, actually. Look, I so, got one right here. I got one right here. I got one right here. Here's a Ziploc bag. I got a Ziploc Ziploc bag. Look, I They're got a Ziploc purses. bag. It, it's got some lip stuff in it. That's what I do. I got, I've got Ziploc bags. You know, They're always not? traveling with me. Always. Where's They're never deal? not there. My never deal? not there. Where is it? No, Where is not, it? Not there. Where is you it? know what? I call, you know what I call my Ziploc bags? Little Jill Zarens. Because they're just always there. Everywhere I look, there's Jill Zarin. There's a Jill Zarin. But in this case, carrying my toiletries, my socks, my my air. Sometimes I just put air in a Ziploc. And I'm like, this way I have air. This way I'm ready. If I go to France, I don't like the way the air smells in France. I'll be like, this air sucks in France. I'm going to have some American air. And I just breathe it from my Ziploc. I, br I bring Cheetah Air wherever I go, you know, in case I don't like the local air. I've got Cheetah Air. All right. It's better. It's from America. So that's why. Uh, yeah, Bethany, um, you know, and the thing is, Bethany's kidding. But is she? That's what you never really know. That's the Bethany. thing. She's like, look, look, it's a joke. It's a joke. But she's really like sending warning shots to Ziploc. I mean, you just never she know is. Bethany. I mean, know? the truth is there is still an article that has been written about it which means that chances are she probably had her publicist reach out to, in this case, I'm reading it off of Parade. It went to enough places. which like, yeah, let everyone know. Let everyone know. I don't have a Ziploc deal. I don't have a Ziploc deal. I want a Ziploc deal. So she's joking, but she's not joking. She's not joking, yeah. Um, <clears throat> well, maybe she'll make a podcast about it. Because I notice what they're doing is they're giving all of these Bravo Lebs pro uh, like podcast platforms now. Because Bethany has like her whole network. Because of course they probably gave her ninety million dollars to do these podcasts on iHeart mm -hmm. or wherever she does. I think she's iHeart, right? Um, but um, she probably got a huge deal, and she you know has her like umbrella now. Like she gave Rachel a podcast where Rachel literally comes on there every week to talk about the one season that she was on. Like an important, I know she was on more seasons, but the one season that she did anything of note on Vanderpump Rules, uh, how many episodes is that going to be, Rachel? Really? Yeah, see, like, this is what I don't understand. Okay. And so, admittedly, I don't listen to Rachel's podcast. I'm so sorry to everyone. I'm so I sorry. I read Vanderpump Recaps. What? Why listen but, when you can read it on Vanderpump Vander <laughs> Recaps on Instagram? Ding. Go ahead, Ben. Sorry. But, but, the, but from what I gather from things like Vanderpump Recaps, recaps and Vanderpod re recaps and from what you say and what everyone says my understanding is that Rachel is spending a lot of time talking about how Tom is a narcissist and all the toxic and harmful things she went through during this relationship and it's every week she's releasing another episode that's about this so my question is this to Bethany Frankel who is headlining the reality reckoning where people where she is trying to take down the powers that be that are exploiting poor innocent reality stars what about you hosting a 
What about you producing a podcast where someone has to relive the trauma of the situation week after week after week is also not exploitation? That's what I would like to know. Oh, because to me, it just seems like the same though, thing. Okay? This is healing. This is healing, though. It's healing, though. It's healing. healing. It's healing. It's healing like it's a Ziploc. Like it's a Ziploc endorsement will be healing to my soul. And and here and I don't I'm I'm struggling whether or not to say it. I'm going to say it. I mean, who who am I kidding? I'm going to say it. But uh, I don't want to say this because I don't. I feel like this season of Vanderpump Rules is going to turn into the Tom is the real victim here season, mm -hmm. and I see it happening. I see it happening online. I don't even want to be part of that. I will say I think it's hypocritical for rachel to sit here and say that tom is a narcissist because he makes everything about himself and he's the innocent victim when she comes on and makes everything about herself and talks about how she's the innocent victim of literally everything she does what tom does which is i'm taking responsibility but then she turns around while she's taking responsibility and blames tom for like manipulating her into doing all of this stuff and she didn't know she was with a narcissistic person which she's right she was with a narcissistic person yes and she and that was right after james so i could see how you'd have a little bit of like like residue there on your psyche. Okay, I'm not denying yeah, that. A little bit but of it residue. comes across. It comes across as completely in making herself innocent, just like Tom is doing. It's like a a nicer, more palatable version of Tom. And as far as I'm concerned, after seeing reading a lot about that podcast, I think they're made for each other. Really, yeah. I mean, they're two. Like she's she's better than Tom, but not much. Okay, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, it. my my feeling is this. Okay, and by the way, I'm not on any high horse about Raquel's future or whatever. I'm just on a high horse about Bethany's hypocrisy. Uh, and I say this as a hypocrite. But um, my high horse is this. I think we all agree that for Rachel, the best thing for her is for her to just sort of like leave the entire situation. Like, go back to the, the dream of helping special needs kids. Go back to the dream of really anything. But get away from... Like, get away from Hollywood, get away from Bravo, get away from reality TV, get away from the reality TV cottage industry. You, like, you've been, you, you've, you went through the meat grinder and everything, and if the issue is, oh my God, I was in this terrible narcissistic relationship and I was taken advantage of it by it, whatever, da, 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 get away, start a life fresh, you know, start doing yoga, all those things. Get away from it. And I feel like the fact that Bethany is like, okay, I'm going to produce a podcast where you can talk about every week is literally just dragging her right back into the muck. It's opening her up to all of, all of us. This crappy are right here. The two of us. Everyone here in the comments. It's opening up Rachel for all the same negativity to come her way. And I actually don't think that's healthy for her. And I think that Bethany may be saying, oh, this is under the guise of healing, but it's under the guise of making Bethany money. And so for as much as she talks about the reality reckoning, how about we talk about the Rachel reckoning? How about that? Where's the Rachel reckoning? Where's, Where's the Rachel, Rachel reckoning? Rachel okay. reckoning, okay. Um, another couple that's really trying it uh, this week has been Jackson and Brittany. Oh yeah. Um, trying to spread rumors that they're broken up with Brittany supposedly <laughs> FaceTiming from a different house and Jax posing with his wedding ring up in the air next to, while he's posing kind of romantically with his publicist and uh, yeah. trying to make that happen. Nobody believes it. First of all, does anybody believe that Jax would cheat on Britney? Of course, every morning, yeah. at least a blowjob <laughs> yes, at the yes. gym every Sorry, single day. Yes. And if anyone was getting a dumpster outside of Republic, it was probably Jax. We all know that it's probably, it's Jax every day with whoever, okay? The Uber driver, he does not care. He'll stick it in wherever there's a wormhole. We know it. Do we care? No, because guess what? You read the package before you ate the meal. You know what I mean? You read, I saw you in the store reading the ingredients list and you still bought that frozen dinner. You are stuck with your own groceries, ma'am. I'm not gonna feel bad for you when Jax fucks you over. I don't even care. I can't even believe I'm watching your stupid show. The I sign will. said McDonald's and now you want filet mignon. You knew what you, know what you were walking into. <laughs> yeah, you knew exactly. it. Uh... The exactly. entire time, um, I'm not. I'm not buying it. I feel like this is just Jax trying to drum up interest in his future failing show. He already. He, the thing today is that he's saying that like the reunion is going to be so good, it's gonna. They're gonna need security. I'm like, wait, who says anything that there even is a reunion for your show about the valley? I don't think that's happening anytime soon. Wait, who said their well, reunion so good? Jax, Jax, because I just looked right now because I wanted to find more information. And Jax, he says, this is this is his quote. I'm pulling it up right now. Okay. Um, well, no. he says, okay, this was three days ago. Sorry. He says, the Valley reunion will need security because there's more drama than Vanderpump rules. 
And then look at, by the way, look at this. Look at this. I'm sorry. He's not I, even I being, enough. he's not even trying to be subtle. What is it? What does it say? That's, no, I'm just saying, look at that picture, Jax. Wait, let me, let me, let me, let me. I'm talking now like Bethany. I'm like, look at this. I can't, I can't even deal with this. Look at, look at that. Look at that. Look at that guy. What, who is that? What, what, what's, what's happening? What's, what's happening? What's going on? See what way, I'm saying about too much Tretinoin? That's Jax. I'll bet he hurts his nose when he pulls on a t shirt. I'm telling you, I can spot it. Very yeah. thin skin. Very, very yeah. thin. He's turning on. It's just not right. By the way, he also got invited to the Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning premiere. What is happening in this world? Why do these people say, okay, so you know what? I'm starting to get, I'm, I'm understanding Heather Gay's rage. I'm like, why do these people get a platform? Why? <laughs> but that's we always the been Mission the question. Impossible. That's always been the question, right? With, uh, with these people. Um, so uh, there's a rumor that Schwartz and Sandy's is closing. There's a couple weird things going on. So one was there, they were closed one day. Someone, TikTok user, somebody went by there and the, the place was closed. And they said they were closed for a special event. But then it turns out they were closed because there was a protest of the Scientology Celebrity Center, which is, as you know, is right across the street. Um, Let's talk about Franklin. Tom. Tom Cruise Mission Impossible. I'm sorry, I'll, I'll let me finish. You see, that's what brought me into it. You said Mission Impossible. I was like, oh my God, Scientology. <laughs> Poor Leah Remini, the real victim in Scandal. Leah Remini. So, or Remini. Is it Remini or Remini? Remini. So, anyway, uh, the guy who owns that place with them is apparently a big Scientologist. So, he closed because people were, I guess, protesting. Greg is his name. Thank you, somebody wow. in there, Jana. Um, so, apparently, Greg's a big Scientologist or whatever. <clears throat> wow. Which, to which I asked them, why did you need all that money to open up? Aren't you guys unlimited? Don't you take all your money from the non paid workers that you steal everything from, allegedly? Leave me alone, Scientology. Seriously, just leave me alone, okay? Aren't you a little surprised that Jax is not a Scientologist yet? He's probably tried, and they probably kicked <laughs> him down the street to that other weird church. I, I know. <laughs> the first person to the be mosaic. rejected from Scientology. <laughs> yeah, it's They're probably like, no, I'm sorry. Mosaic. <laughs> they like give him the wrong address oh my yeah. goodness that's wild um i mean i don't know i still don't know how schwartz and sandy's is going to stay in business i mean i feel like at a certain point like okay the curiosity about going there rubbernecking is going to ease off and then i just i just i just don't see it as a bar for that neighborhood that's going to thrive i really don't yeah, I think what made the other ones work is that they're all close enough to each other to bar hop to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Lisa v Vanderpump owned that whole block, really. She has Sir no. Pump and Tom Tom, where she can just collect your money as you go to each three of the things to try and see celebrities. But when the celebrities have to go to the east side, well, it's not the east, east side, but comparatively, you know, you still have to get in the cab and... Uh, go over there yeah i don't know yeah that realm that realm there that's by um stand uh, upright uh, citizens brigades that's like a that area there's sort of like hipster but comedy hipster area and that's just not schwartz and sandy's schwartz and sandy's needs to just sort of like leech off of sir and so they're just too far away yeah people are reminding us that stassi and Jax went to uh scientology when they first got to la which is hilarious <laughs> i forgot that but Jax probably went in and they were like, I'm sorry, sir, we're here to clear your brain and your brain is more clear than anybody else's. <laughs> so we're actually going to have to ask you to, your, your brain is too clear to be. So. My com by the way, the comments on my Instagram live are not updating. So um, I'm just stuck. The latest comment has been up there for like 15 minutes saying talk about Jackson and Brittany uh, separation rumors. So I apologize if I'm ignoring commenters. I just I can't see you. Uh, people are asking to talk about um, James abuse rumors. Okay, here's the mm. thing. There, I have read these rumors, James abuse rumors from Vanderpump Rules. I'm not really comfortable talking about it yet because I don't know that much about it. And that's pretty big. And from what I've read, it's been veiled allegations from Kristen, which she's going to unveil, I guess, when it's convenient for you know mm. a show or something like i'm assuming that she's alluding to some kind of show kind of thing and i don't i don't know i don't doubt it i mean james has shown himself to be kind of violent and a drunk um <clears throat> and spit on kristen's door and did all of that stuff so yeah and then there was the whole raquel like my no you know my nose rebroke because james kind of bumped into me or whatever that whole thing yeah. i mean there's been a lot of fishy stuff i don't really have an opinion on it until we hear more from it
What yeah. do you think? Because that's well, no, that's that's a heavy thing, and like, I will joke about Ziploc bags. I will joke about Bethany Frankel, and her rea- reality. Yeah, we reckoning. can't joke about someone get abused. But you know, abuse Ooh. is like a when you don't have all the information. Like the last thing that I want, you know, what I don't want to be part of is when there is like some documentary that comes out and they're like, everyone was laughing at me. And they pull up clips of us being like, oh, what's going on with that abuse? And we're like, the, we're like, you know, those, those documentaries where they always show content creators just being mean to people and then we're the bullies. So thankfully I, they never show us. In those. <laughs> but know, also, um, but also, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't like we're not going to talk about that. I, I have a question. Can we talk very briefly about some traders stuff? Because Traders is, you know, the best show. Yes, on TV but right can now. I say one thing real quick? Absolutely. Um, before we do that, people are asking about Southern Hospitality. We did watch it. We are going to recap that for this week's bonus on Patreon. Not to plug, yeah. but just so you know, we are going to be talking about that. We'll probably release it tomorrow at some yeah, point. We're going to talk the about The plan it. is to record it tomorrow. Um, okay. So, uh, I mean, there's not a huge amount of news about the Traders, but I know that we're all watching it. We're all loving it. And um, I did, uh, I did, there was an interview with uh, Dr. Will in Entertainment Weekly where he basically, he doesn't really say much, which is annoying, but they're kind of like, so what's the deal? Like, why, like, why do you, uh, why are the Big Brother people so bad at it? And he's basically like, he basically says what you say, Ronnie. He's like, honestly, I think they went on there to show that they still got it, but they just never had it in the first place. You know, they just were lucky. <laughs> they all were lucky on their seasons, but he's basically like, they're all just shitty game players. So I thought you would like that, that you felt backed up by that. I do because I like to, I love Dr. Will, you know, I like being backed up by someone like that. Love you. I yeah. respect your pastiness. I wish I could avoid the sun <laughs> like you. I wish I had piles I just of money want... to hide under like you do. Get my face done. <laughs> I guess I didn't really um, have much more to say about it. Oh, the producers are also denying that they intervened to make sure that Peter was saved last week. They are saying that the fire cha- the fire thing was something that was pre-planned and they would not have intervened because the show doesn't need any intervening. Do well, no, I don't. But, you know, it. it's funny that human nature will usually take care of stuff anyway because it's led to a better show, I think, having that. Because they may have saved Peter for one week, but then watching Peter just be such an idiot. I think if they got Peter out last week, Peter would have left kind of a hero in a way. Like, oh my God, Peter's such a good person and he never betrayed the faithfuls. He like stayed the whole time and then and then he's so smart. And instead, he's there. And so we got to marinate in his stupidity. And now people are seeing what a <laughs> dumbass he is. And he was never smart in the first place. And you all were giving him too much credit for the very beginning. So I'm actually happy that he stayed now that we're seeing how it's playing out i what i I have to say one thing that's really funny about the traders is that we are now at a state where we are actively rooting against the faithfuls that are playing the game properly like well he's not he's really fucking it up but like every time that the faithful start to do well we get so mad at them like fuck them hate them <laughs> they should die why yeah, are they I want doing the faithfuls, this uh, I, I hate the faithfuls i want them dead <laughs> the traders for life of course <laughs> But it's like in the beginning of the season, you're like, you're almost there. But I think it's because in the beginning of the season, Dan was a traitor. And I didn't like Dan as a traitor. And I wanted them to find Dan. But now that Phaedra's in danger, I want all the faithfuls to mess up. It just keeps the pendulum swings back and forth. No, I don't want them to find any of the traitors. I love the traitors. Even when it was Dan, I didn't want them to find the traitors. Uh but I mean, I was raised religious, you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm the traitor. I feel like they were always trying to fucking banish my ass. And so mm. now, of course, I'm just projecting. I'm like, I hope that they get mm. our neighbors down the street who first said I was gay to all the moms on the street. Got everybody well, maybe- to hate me. Like, I'm making it all about my childhood. It's like, like it's not that. about you, Ronnie, you know? <laughs> I like that. Well, maybe, maybe I'll <laughs> amend it. How about I amend it to this, which is that for some reason on this show, they seem to get rid of the people that I want to stick around really er- like really early. So like I would have liked Larsa to have been around longer and Tamara, well, Tamara got murdered, but like, I w- like, I- why couldn't they have had a witch hunt against Peter and Kevin earlier on? They're so generic and boring. Like we don't, but yeah, and yet we're stuck with them week after week. Whereas interesting people like Janelle, Larsa, Peppermint, they're gone. That's not cool. I hate the faithfuls. <laughs> 
Yeah, faithful suck. Okay, everybody, let's wrap up this part and start doing some calls because, you know, this is to talk to you guys at the end of the day. Okay, so we're going to get off over here on the audio version and on the YouTube version. We're going to sign off. But everybody on Instagram Live, stick around to chat. Everybody, thank you so much for being here. We're here every other Monday live on Instagram Live at Watch What Crappens. I'm at Ronnie Karam. Ben is at Ben Mendelker on Instagram. Follow mm -hmm. everybody. Guys, it's going to be great. Love you guys. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Strolling the park with Caitlin Clark. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no last namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Know your worth with Jason Kurt. She's the wind beneath our Jennifer Wing. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying. It's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg. You can't have a burger without the Berg. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. She's a little bit loony. Junie. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Chadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She's quite the catch. It's Victoria Cotchett. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Your Crappens ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com slash survey. Academy is a new scripted podcast that follows Ava Richards, played by HBO's Industries' Myhala Herald, a brilliant scholarship student who has to quickly adapt to her newfound eat-or-be-eaten world. Ava's ambitions take hold and her small-town values break in hopes of becoming the first scholarship student to make the list. Bishop Gray's all-coveted academic top 10, curated by the headmaster himself. But after realizing she has no chance at the list on her own, she reluctantly accepts an invitation to a secret underground society that pulls the strings on campus life and academic success. If she bends to their will, she'll have everything she's ever dreamed of. But at what cost? Academy takes you into the world of a cutthroat private school where power, money, and sex collide in a game of life and death. Follow Academy on the Wondery app or wherever you get your podcasts. You can binge all episodes of Academy early and ad-free right now by joining Wondery Plus.